We serve an awesome God, faithful God. This song says it about as good as any. The splendor of the King. The splendor of the King. Praise the Lord, beloved. On behalf of Apostle Dwayne Broussard and our MOGFC family, we want to thank you for inviting us into your home. I know this message will be a blessing, so call a friend, a neighbor, or get a group and get ready to receive a fresh word from the Lord that will be life-changing. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we here at Mystery of God's Fellowship Church. Now, here is Apostle D with the message. First of all, we welcome our Facebook audience, uh, our YouTube audience. We're having some issues with our internet, but we thank y'all for your faithfulness to the household of faith. Good morning. Thank you for your faithfulness to the telephone saints. Thank you for your faithfulness. Heavenly Father, eternal God, I step back that you may step up. I pray that I decrease, that thy spirit may increase that they neither see me nor hear me today. Holy Ghost, show us the Master. Show us our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need you, Lord Jesus. Yes. There is no God above you nor beside you. You're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul and Peter. You are the only true and living God. You are the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. You are the Ferris of 10,000. You're the chief bishop of my soul. Lord Jesus, my prayer today is that you give us ears to hear and a heart to receive your word that none of us leave here the way we came. Now, Father, we lift you up. We present an atmosphere for your presence. None of me and all of you anoint me to complete this assignment. Yeah. Have your way today as we're always careful to give you all glory, all praise, and all honor in Jesus Christ's name. Let everyone in agreement say amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord another praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. My God, how many really got blessed by Sabbath school Amen. teaching? If you didn't get it, please go back and watch it. Ooh. Come on with me to the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 16. Hallelujah. Luke, chapter 16, starting at verse 14. Hallelujah. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And they derided him. Or they made some noise to, to come against what he just said. And he said unto them, You are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is, for that which is highly esteemed of men, among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Come on now. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. 
Whosoever put away his wife and married another committed adultery. And whosoever married her that is put away from her husband committed adultery. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. I mean, no, that's the difference between a home going and a funeral. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off, okay. and Lazarus in his bosom. Mm -hmm. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Oh, no. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good thing, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Do you get this? Yeah. Let me ask y'all something. How many believe hell is real? Amen. You got people saying, if you hear after the rapture, you got people trying to say this and that. I'm not trying to prepare nobody to stay after the rapture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many say, well, after we die, there ain't nothing left? Is this in Ray? Did not Jesus say, oh, there's something left after you leave here? That's more real than what you're on this side. I think that's called stinking thinking when you think, well, this is hell here. He says, verse 26, and besides all of this, between you, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. Everybody say fixed. fixed. You know what that means? You can't change it. How many people you know still trying to change the word of God? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't believe there's a hell. You, you can't. It's already fixed. Come on now. Mm -hmm. In other words, Abraham is saying, I don't care if I love you to death. I can't help you. Come on now. Watch this. He said there is fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from where you are. Listen, this is going to hurt some people. But open your ears. There is no such thing as purgatory. Amen. The Bible just said they can't come. Once you're over there, you can't come back. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray my grandmother back. I'm going to pray my uncle. I'm, mm -mm. Watch this. Come on, sister. Verse 27, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Send him. Who is him? Lazarus. Send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brethren that have stinking thinking, that he may testify unto them Least they also come into this place of torment. What do you think he want Lazarus to go back and tell his brother? <laughs> Hell is real. Don't go there, please. You ever talk to some people and they still say, I'm going to believe the way I want to believe? Look, look. Verse 29. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, 
<laughs> but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. <laughs> no, Father. Because some of them don't want to hear the word of God. That ain't going to change it. They're not even going to hear the prophecy where the young lions will roar. Mm, and there's some places we shouldn't go because we're quarantined. Come on, man, God. They won't hear that. Preach. But if somebody come from the dead, he said, that ain't going to help you. Verse 31. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded the one rose from the dead. Mm. Okay. Lord, may Come you on. add a blessing to the reading of your word. God, give us ears to hear. Come on, by faith, I want you to declare that I'm going to get this word. Gonna get it's going to change how I think. It's going to change my decision. I ain't going to hell for nobody. I ain't going to hell for nobody. Hallelujah. Now come on, look at our brother and sister and say, you're blessed. You're blessed. Not because I say so. Because the word of God says so. Come on, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. As I was reading, the Lord said, go read the end of the year letter and see. If I didn't tell you, you ain't going to be able to trust your monies. Stock market going to be up and down. Mm. Trust me. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going I'm to I'm bring a spirit of divisiveness to the political, the ethical, the spiritual. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like never before. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm going to make it where you won't be able to go places. Mm. Restraint. Oh. Lord Jesus. Come on. I understand now when Jesus said they have heard, but they have not understood. Men and women of God, the pull, the draw to Christianity is the prospect of not only escaping hell, but to walk in freedom. Everybody say freedom. freedom. Yeah. To walk as the anointed. Say anointed. anointed. To walk in the I want to say the image, but how about if I say walk in the identity of Christ? Everybody say identity with Christ. Identity with Christ. The draw, the pull of Christianity is to walk in the truth of Christ. Everybody say truth. 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 And the, the prospect of walking in the healing of Christ. Everybody say heal. How many know that is the acronym for faith? You just spell faith. Hmm. Freedom in Christ. Anointed in Christ. I identity in Christ. Truth in Christ. Healing in Christ. This is, this is the faith that embodies the very core and the rudiments. That validates every one of us that wants to be connected to the Christian banner. What, what are you talking about, the Christian banner? May I put you in remembrance of Exodus chapter 17, verse 15. And Moses built an altar. I said, and Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. The Lord, my banner. Amen. In other words, freedom is more than a luxury. It is a living unto Christ. Freedom is not, oh, I'm a, I, some people can have the luxury of being free. No, we all should be free. Am I right about it this morning? Amen. Freedom is not a luxury. It is a living unto Christ, people of faith. The devil's plot may shake you, but it should never shock you. Amen. Don't you remember 1 Peter chapter 4? I know you know it. 
Beloved, thinking I strange for the fiery trials, which is to what? Try you as though some strange thing is happening to you. I said the plot of the devil may shake you, but it should not shock you. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. There will always be tension and teases. There will always be missteps and mockings. Always. When you find the courage, I say when you find the courage to break away from the counterfeit ideology that promotes carbon copy conformity. God never called you to be an apostle Paul. He called you to be you. God never called us to be Moses Jr. Am I right about it? Amen. Listen to me again. There will always be missteps and mockery when you find the courage to say, you know what? I'm not just going to church just so I can go to church. I want to get something out of church. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm not just going there to do my part. Hallelujah. Glory. Don't you see? That's what the powers that be want us to be. Carbon copies. Sound alike. Walk alike. Dress alike. We see that with, with all these new styles coming out. But is there any new style? Or can you go see that back there? We wore that in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm trying to tell you this morning. When I'm talking about carbon copies of conformity, Romans chapter 12, verse 5 puts it this way. So we are many in Christ. So we are many, but we are one in Christ. And one member, one of another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop trying to be me and just be who you are. Are you getting this, brothers and sisters? In other words, be around folks that make you challenge your faith and stop being around folks that make you compromise your faith. Hallelujah. Beloved of God, many of us have tasted godly justification while never really knowing godly sanctification. Therefore, we are struggling to experience glorification. He loved us while we were what? Yes, yes sinners. sinners. How many of us, brothers and sisters, we walk under grace? We know it. How many of us, if we honest, know? I know I've been running from God. So you are walking and experiencing godly justification without really knowing godly sanctification. And that's why we are struggling to experience the glorification. Hallelujah. Simply put, your choice reveals your true voice. Come on, man of God. Make it plain. Make it plain. I really don't want to uh, be part of the prayer. I really don't want to come to church. I really, I just want to talk about God. Your choice yeah. is your real voice. Now. Simply put, your choice is your real voice. Listen to me what I'm telling you. Grace is the means of salvation. Grace. But godly peace is the result of your salvation. Now, if you don't have peace, shouldn't there be a red flag? Mm -hmm. I say grace is the means of salvation, but godly peace is the result of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This peace and this freedom is based on God's choice and not our choice. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This peace, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. This peace, a man whose mind is stayed upon the Lord shall have what? Perfect, Perfect peace. And he shall give you the peace that passeth what? Oh All God. man's understanding. This peace, this freedom is based on God's choice and not our choice. Yes. Disciples of Christ Jesus. Your heart must be fixed. Your heart must be fixed 
on God's ways yes. and God's choice. Hallelujah. And not on your ways or your choice. Come on, Pastor. We have heard as a man thinking in his heart. So, so is he. So is he. Therefore, your heart must always be in the direction of God. When your heart is not in the direction of God, there is no grace. When your heart is not in the direction of God, there is no peace. Okay. N-O. No Jesus. N-O. No peace. K-N-O-W. No Jesus. K-N-O-W. No peace. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord would declare, make your choices based on God's choices from here on out. Hallelujah. I know we've heard it before. What will God do? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Make your choice based on God's choice. Did you come for a word this morning, yes. beloved of God? Yes. I believe God has a word for us that will open the scriptures so we may see it. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, this is the only chapter... This is the only chapter in the Gospels where previously Jesus has always talked or ministered to who? The lowly and to the poor. Always. But now Jesus is teaching uh, now stands out to those that want to follow. But he's teaching us the dangers of bad choices hmm. and godly riches. He changes teachings up from teaching, oh, it's okay to do this, it's okay to be lonely, it's okay to be, oh, we all know Jesus is love. But he changes his teaching to what? If you're going to be a follower of mine, beware of bad choices yeah. and godly riches. Okay. Because godly riches does not automatically mean you have the favor of God. Okay. Nor does walking in poverty mean you have the favor of God. In other words, there must be a balance for blessings. Yes or no, brothers and sisters? Our heart is set in the wrong direction when we seek more of earthly wealth. Our heart is set in the wrong direction when we think of our choices instead of God's choice. What am I talking about? When we put more emphasis on earthly resources over godly source. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. If your life is spinning out of control right now, shouldn't you be seeking God more, not less? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're starting to see doors close up, you understand? What am I talking about? Jobs threatening money tight, friends no longer helping, family no longer helping, people saying yes one day and no the next day. Those are doors that's being shut. Shouldn't you be wanting to seek God more? Please hear me. The Bible says, before we got to verse 14, it talked about what? It's trying to serve two masters. You will hate one, and love the other. You cannot serve two masters. He said one called mammon. Mammon means wealth. You're trying to get wealth without God. You're trying to get peace without God. You're trying to control your house without God. You're trying to control your money without God. You're trying to control your walk in God without God. No man can serve two masters. Amen. This is what, now we're picking up the story after that. I'm just laying a foundation. And so we pick it up in verse 14 where he says, And the Pharisees also who were what? Covetous. How many know the Pharisees supposed to be what? Religious people, right? And covetous people are people posing as Christ followers. Am I talking to anybody? 
that you say, I don't like my spirit. I'm covetous. I'm jealous when another brother get blessed, another sister get blessed. I'm happy when a brother fail. I'm happy when a sister fail. That's the wrong heart. Amen. Hallelujah. And so God talks about, I'm not talking about the poor right now. I'm not talking about the lowly in spirit right now. I'm talking about my followers who's constantly making bad choices and putting their trust in worldly riches. Okay, now. As though that's their resource. Hallelujah. Coveted people are people posing as Christ followers. People that say we don't have to follow everything in the word of God. Mm -hmm. We don't have to follow everything, do we? Have you ever met anybody like that? This are the Pharisees that, uh, and they derided, uh, and they heard when they heard all these things. If you read the beginning of chapter 16, he's going to tell you what these things are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. About an unjust steward playing church. You say, man, did God make it clear? Everyone under the sound of my voice is a steward of God's wealth. Isn't it God that gave you the help to go get that money off your job? Come on. That makes you a steward. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you call yourself a Christian that you abide by the word of God? That makes you a steward. Amen. And so before we get to verse 14, he talks about, see how this unjust steward was trying to play church, trying to con. Y'all got so busy worrying about, oh, God just love. He's just talking to the poor in spirit, the lowly in spirit. He says, no, I'm going to change my teaching now. I'm going to talk on those that constantly make bad choices Come on, hmm. and still think I'm going to justify them. I want to talk to people that want to put more trust in their resource than put their trust in me as their source. Hmm. You say, man, the guy, well, how can I tell? When you start pulling away from God, that's how you can tell. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. How do you pull away from God? We live in an age right now where let's say some of y'all may miss Bible study. You're never going to go pull it up hmm. to see what was taught. What are you watching on TV more? You think because you hear a few praise songs that make you right with God? That's a pulling away, saints. What did we say? Not your choice, God's choice. Hallelujah. God said he inhabit the praises of his people. What are you praising him for when you're struggling on every front? Okay, now. So you know how to say the right thing, but you don't have godly peace. Mm -hmm. If the truth be told about it, you know. Right. You're not telling people you're scared about, oh, this stuff I owe, this debt I owe, my car note, how I'm going to pay my rent. How I'm a... You may not be telling, we don't need to know your business. Right. God knows your business. Amen. And God says, this is what I'm coming to talk to today. You ain't letting nobody know your business, but you know you done made some bad choices. You know I should have made that choice to live there instead of here. Hallelujah. You know I should have went to bed early instead of staying up late. I'm trying to get you to understand that uh, Luke is talking about uh, God is trying to deal with people that's making decisions or making choices based on how they see it and not how God sees it. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, let me ask you something. You think God will let you lose an eye so you can get into heaven? <laughs> you think God will let you lose a foot to get into heaven? Jesus said, it is better for a man to enter into heaven, lame, blind, or halt, than for him to go into hell whole. Okay. Hallelujah. The problem is, how many of us are discerning that I'm so fighting to be whole that I don't realize that I'm not whole. Hmm. I'm not whole in my thinking. I'm not whole in my judgment. Hallelujah. We got people that can look at some of their decisions and say, man, that was a bad choice there. Whatever bad choices you're making in the natural, you better make sure that it's going to move over to the spiritual. 
It's okay to make some bad choices in the natural. Oh, I put the fire on low and end up burning the beans. That ain't going to send you to hell. But some choices will send you to hell. You ever heard me say some choices or decisions are costly? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I can only use me for an example. I remember the Lord told me one night, I was driving on 529. He said, listen, stop over. I'm, just like you hear me, that's how I heard the Holy Spirit say, pull into AutoZone and buy you a steering wheel club. So you start a card on your store. Hmm. I pulled in. I saw $59. That's too much. I ain't gonna spend that. Uh, come on. Thousands of dollars later. I learned a val very valuable lesson. Come on. Thousands of dollars later. I've learned a very valuable lesson. So from the benefit that I've learned, I'm trying to tell God's people, <laughs> some decisions are too costly. Look, mommy, <laughs> I broke the glass. Look, mommy, I broke the 72-inch color TV. Which one is more costly? Hallelujah. I'm trying to help somebody today in terms of your salvation is the greatest asset you have. And to lose it is too costly. It's too costly. And you concerned about how people see you, how people think about you. You better be more concerned about how God see you yeah. and what God thinks about you. He said, and these Pharisees are covetous. You know what that means? They thought they were better than everybody else. Could you be a child of God thinking you hear from God more than anybody else? God is speaking to you more than anybody else. Hallelujah. You know, I say this in love. I really do. To me, I've learned the dumbest person on the planet is somebody that knows the right thing to do and does not do it. Amen. You've got to be some kind of dumb to know. Hallelujah. Yeah. I found out that smoking causes cancer. I don't care. Then years later, the doctor said you got cancer. Call for the preacher and have him pray for me. Some choices are too expensive. Yes or no, saints? I'm trying to be real, showing natural examples. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and they were covetous. Covetous. Meaning they're trying to justify themselves before who? Men. They're trying to justify their love. It's okay to love a man. A man loving a man. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's okay uh, to do stuff before you get married. Mm -hmm. Justified before men. But not before God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What am I talking about? You're trying to justify your religion. And one of the scariest things, you begin to try to justify your political persuasion. Mm -hmm. I keep telling you, the Bible says... Men love darkness rather than light. Jesus said, they hated me, they're going to hate you. I'm trying to tell somebody, the Republicans don't have our back, and the Democrats don't have our back. The Independents don't have our back. God has our back. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, prove it to me. I'm so glad somebody said that. This is going to take a little bit. Come on. If you go to Turkey, the country Turkey, mm -hmm. that is a Muslim nation. Mm -hmm. They will not let you talk about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. They will arrest you. If you go to Iraq or Iran, they will not let you support Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Only in America did we tell people, you can come to America 
and bring your religion, bring your say so, and then we're shocked that they didn't change laws and say you can't pray in the name of Jesus. Mm, come on. Hallelujah. Amen. We're shocked because you're telling me that I can't talk about Jesus. Hmm. How foolish is that, saints? Mm -hmm. It is like this. I'm going to bring my basketball to the basketball co court. And if you don't pick me to play, I'm taking my ball home. America welcomed everybody in their boat. Come on in, come on in. And now they're trying to kick out Jesus Christ wow. out the boat. How crazy is that, saying? Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What am I talking about? Make choices based on God's choice. Wow. It doesn't matter if the world disagree with you. Hallelujah. Amen. They disagree with him from the beginning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so... Religious people are covetous people. But God knows the direction of their heart. He says, but God knows your heart. For that which is, for that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Wow. Wow. This is in red. So God, you don't want us to have pride? I shoot pool well. I do this well. I do that well. You can't say by the grace of God I'm able to do this. You can't speak correctly. Man, I drive so well I never got a speeding ticket. By the grace of God, I never got a speeding ticket. Amen. I sped. They just never caught me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. I never had a ticket. No, the police stopped you. You were just blessed not to get a ticket. Come on. But you're, not, you're never going to credit God? You know you're supposed to lose that job. Hallelujah. You know you shouldn't have got that house with all those evictions. You know you shouldn't have got this with all that on your resume. And you're still not giving God? That which is esteemed highly. You think you're doing it in your mind, don't you? I'm talking about bad choices this morning. I'm talking about choices that need to be based on God. In other words, the just of what I'm saying, I can sum it up right now. If it's your decision, stop blaming God. Okay, if it's your decision, you know what, I'm going to eat this whole apple pie. Don't blame it on the devil. Don't blame it on God. Amen. Yes or no? We are making choices, and then to make us look right, we're blaming everybody but who we should blame it on. He says in verse 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Y'all know John means John the Baptist, right? Mm -hmm. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man pressing into it. Please hear this. Up until John the Baptist, the prophets, the preachers, they spoke about the Messiah coming. After John, we should be preaching the Messiah has come and left you with all power and authority. That's our preaching today. Not about he may come. Not about, oh, he, uh, he's come, but he didn't give us power and authority. The law and the prophets are still despised while man's tradition is being exalted. Hallelujah. What am I talking about? We hear it today, right? Amen. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Amen. Now let me ask y'all something. I know we know about what, the nine gifts of the Spirit? Can we talk about the five natural gifts? Eyes, smell, taste, hearing, touch, right? Mm -hmm. What about that brain God gave you? Is that a gift? Can I, can I ask you why you lost it? Somebody said it makes sense. Here's what I'm telling you. They're telling you science over fiction. They're telling you it has been proven. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Has it been proven that seatbelt saves lives? Yes. 
Yes. Everybody wearing a seatbelt. <coughs> That's not fiction. What about the flu shot? Does it protect you? Yes or no? Yet, now all of a sudden, we have lost our gift of thinking and started following blindly to people that have no clue what they're saying. Hallelujah. Isn't this what we call a cult? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Jim Jones? Drink the Kool-Aid. Hmm. Hallelujah. You're not going to check nothing out for yourself? Come on now. I really don't want to listen to news. So you don't want to hear the lies that's being told. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Don't let the news get you down. That's not what I'm saying. Come on, come on. Let the news inform you or inform, I mean, uh, uh, give you confirmation. Right. Come on. You're not informing me about nothing. I already know what's happening. The Bible is just confirming it. The news is confirming it. Hallelujah. Let me ask y'all something. The Bible says that evil will rise worse and worse the closer we get to Jesus. Amen. Have y'all ever read that? Amen. Forgive me. I'm trying to get this to stay on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What am I talking about? For evil to work uh, to wax worse and worse. That means the sixties ain't got nothing for what we're about to experience on this people planet. The thirties don't have nothing. I said, uh, years ago I used to teach end time teaching. The end time teaching was for people that knew their Bible. Because when you start teaching end time, people got to know their scripture. Because it won't make sense with what you're saying if they just know Peter walked on water. Right. Come on now. But anyway, I told them, I said two things, three things going to happen. Murders will increase. Mm. Without a doubt. That's what the Bible says. Number two, drugs will become legal. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm talking back in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. They called me. I'm not, I was young, and they were like, oh, what this young girl? And some people walked out when I was teaching, because the last thing I said, racism got to get extremely worse. Mm -hmm. This was back in 92, 93. Mm -hmm. We used to videotape on the uh, VHS. If Hurricane Katrina wasn't destroyed, I would, I would love to play it today to show you. Are we living in a time where racism is? You got people saying, well, I don't see color. I don't see this. Yeah. You don't, but other people do. Right, right. <clears throat> the Bible says that if I do anything that offend my brother, I should stop doing it. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. So to the Christians watching me, if you know your African-American brother is offended by people dying without any weapon on them, then why are you not trying to help stop it? I'm trying to tell you about covetedness. People say, well, my world is fine. I ain't got to worry about yours. My child fed, I ain't got to worry about your child being fed. Yes or no? That's the spirit of covetedness. You don't think the seed of violence is going to come knock at your door? Come on. God says, make choices based on my choices. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you begin to exalt man's tradition over God's truth, Wrong decision. Wrong choice. What is the kingdom of God, men and women of God? He said, and since the time that the kingdom of God is preached, what is the kingdom of God that's being preached? Number one, to repent. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't, I'm not asking nobody about their religion. I'm not telling you don't repent. I'm telling you to repent. That's the kingdom of God. To repent and to walk in the power of God. We want justification with no sanctification. But I've come to tell you, 
A new dedication. Hallelujah. Brings a new uh, sanctification. A new justification. And a new glorification. Amen. How dedicated are you in saying, God, I will obey your choice. Mm -hmm. Even if it makes me look stupid. Even if it makes me look bad. Hallelujah. Amen. It's okay to be wrong. We didn't write a book, right? <laughs> I got to give everybody their money back because I wrote a book. You wouldn't believe being in ministry as long as I have. I can tell you a bunch of prophets' names that said the world was going to end in 1999. The world was going to end in 2000. Anybody remember Y2K? Amen. Amen. And I'm like, no, it's not. You wouldn't believe. I remember one time I told the people, uh, you can be God. They got offended at me. That's sacrilegious. Well, what I do with Philippians? Let this mind be in you. Who thought it not equal to be, uh, did not think it robbery to be equal with God. So if I got the mind of Christ, shouldn't I think I'm equal with God? Because I can do what God said I can do. I can have what God said I can have. You're not going to lie to me and tell me I can't be blessed going out and blessed coming in. You're not going to lie to me and tell me, only, oh, well, your child is the wrong color. They can never be president. Not my child. Not when, when I got this type of power. Hallelujah. So we, we what? We fall under the what? The counterfeit ideology that promotes what? Conformity. Mm. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen here. Okay. I'm not gonna, go, I'm not gonna sit kneel and bow because you told me. Right. You're not gonna tell me when to cry. You're not gonna tell me when to shout. You're not gonna tell me when to pray. You're not gonna tell me how to pray. I'm gonna talk to my God and say, God, what is going on? Amen. Make choices based on God's choice. And then you can be an Isaiah. God go throughout the whole earth looking whom he may do great exploit. And, oh, and, and Isaiah said, Lord, here am I. Send me. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. But are you going to be sanctified, set apart? Mm. Watch this. Here's what got me. In verse 17, he says, And it, it is easy for heaven and earth to pass than for one tittle of the law to fail. How many know that means it's fixed? You can't change it. If it was wrong for Moses and them, it's still wrong for us. Oh, that's antiquated. That's outdated. No, it's not. Well, that was back in that time. Hallelujah. We need it in this time. Too. We definitely need it in this time, brothers and sisters. He says, it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for God to change what he said. Amen. God says, I change now. So much so, this is what threw me. Look at the next verse. Whosoever put it away his wife and married another committed adultery. And whosoever married her that is put away from her husband committed adultery. Here's the question. Whoa, 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 whoa. We weren't even talking about marriage. Mm -hmm. Why is that even here? Come on, Why did you put that here? We're talking about what? Bad stewards. We're talking about you can't serve two masters. We're talking about all of this. And then you throw this at me. Mm -hmm. Why is that even here? Why? 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 Because you got to remember what Jesus said. Jesus, why did Moses give us a writing of divorce? He said it was not so from the beginning. He's trying to show us. See, y'all still think I changed on this divorce thing, right? Y'all think I changed because uh, we, we, we got indifference. We got, uh, what's, what's the irreconcilable here? It's because your heart is hard. I'm talking to some people's heart who's hard about forgiving a brother or sister. Right now. You ever saw some people with bad attitudes how to get along with their significant other? And you're like, man, how they can get along with them people and can't get along with nobody else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever heard somebody say, I love you, but I don't like you? Yeah, I heard that many times. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, yeah. I got 
gotta love you, 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 my mom. That's an insult. That's an insult. If I wasn't your mama, could you love me for all the stuff I did for you? Do you understand the, uh, what I'm talking about now about the counterfeit ideology? Many of us don't even know what true love look like, feel like. Well, I got to wish you happy birthday because I saw it on my Facebook. Don't know you, but I better do it. Yes or no? Yes. How many know that's called peer pressure? Yes. That's not based on God's choice. Mm -hmm. God said, whatever you do, don't you ever be a hypocrite. Come on. Mm -hmm. He said, whatever you do, I'd rather you're hot or cold, but never lukewarm. Come on. Come on. Lukewarm ain't nothing more than a hypocrite. Come on, man. How many times I tell people, you either love me or hate me, but you ain't going to get me in the middle. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. About the YouTube straightforward. I'm only telling you what the words say. Hmm. In other words, if the mailman told me I need you to bring that check to them every first of the month, I'm gonna bring it every first of the month. I don't care if I get sleep or not. They told me to keep my job. I gotta bring your check in the mail. You gotta have it in your mailbox on the first. Hmm. Well, they running it. Not this postman. <laughs> it's coming on the first. Because I'm obeying what God or uh, the boss told me to do. Right. Can I talk to some people who have made a choice to say, I want to do what God told me to do? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. I've come to preach to folks this morning who's ready to turn in the right decision. Right. I'm ready to turn toward the right decision. Who's tired of trying to serve, who's tired of trying to serve two masters. I've been trying a long time to serve two masters. You got some Christians trying to steal money. Stimulus check, yeah. SBA oh, loans. I mean, come on. Right. I tell people all the time, you know why I live and act the way I do? I'm innocent. I don't even have no warrants out on me. I got insurance. I, I, I'm legal anywhere I go. Come on, hallelujah. Praise God, thank you, Amen. Lord. But that gives me a certain boldness. Yes. Amen. You know what I'm saying? That I say, God, you got to be for me. You said if I do this, this, and this, then you would fight my battle. Come on now. But you can't try to con people and then turn around and want God to fight for you. You can't walk in the flat trying to walk in the spirit. Come on. It's never going to happen. That's why doors are being closed on you. Yeah, yeah. Because you made a lot of decisions based on you. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Okay. You know how many parents I met have made decisions based on them? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that was best for your child. Right. You, didn't, you, you didn't think about, boy, if I cheat on my spouse, that's going to mess with it. I can't do it. I can't mess over these little ones like that. I can, ooh, but she's so fine. I can't do it. Mm, come on. Preach, man of God. I had a preacher tell me the other day, man of God, I know it's, uh, that some preachers have to deal with sex and fornication. <laughs> I say, well, first of all, let me tell you my testimony. I waited till I was 44 before I got married. That means I was a virgin. Preach. The only woman I ever knew was my wife. Hallelujah. Caught her cheating. Goodbye. 2009 to now. That's 11 more years. Mm -hmm. Been on a date? Never. Kissed anyone? No. Sex? No. Don't come tell me you can't do it. Because I look out into the pew and I say, if that ever happened, what will Brother Christopher think? Come on, God. If that ever happened, what was Sister Fabiola? I made a choice based on God's choice and how much Woo! I love y'all. Yeah! I bleed like any other man. Yeah. I walk just like any other man. Yeah. I want a house on a hill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what's more important to me mm. is the welfare of God's people Thank than my God. welfare. Oh, hallelujah. Did you think about the welfare of your spouse before you did something? Did you think of the welfare of your children before you did something? Come on, come 
come on. Years ago, before I got married, oh, I used to quit jobs just because I knew I had money in the bank. Mm -hmm. No children, no spouse. When I ate, I could break the plate. Mm -hmm. Once I was full, the whole world was full. So you better not look at me the wrong way, as bad as I wanted to go into ministry. <laughs> this is God telling me to leave right now. I had to get up in front of church and tell him I miss God. I'm sorry, son. That wasn't God telling me. You know how embarrassing that is? I did it about nine, ten times. So I'm like, God, I'm not telling nobody else because this is ridiculous. And God said, you're speaking wrong. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Am I talking to anybody that have a calling on their life and you're saying, God, what's taking so long? You! You, because you keep making choices your way. How you can't see that? Hallelujah. I remember the doctor come and say, listen, I want to operate on you, but you got to lose some weight. Why the doctor ain't operating on me? He don't like me. <laughs> no, you ain't did what you had to do. You got to lose some weight. That's like we are. Uh, I want to be over here. What are you the issue? For the issue? <laughs> I'm trying to get y'all to see that why he used the example of marriage. Because he said I never changed it. Because God's word never changed. It's fixed. So if somebody asks me, is God into divorce? No. Even in the book of Corinthians, he says... If an unbeliever depart, a brother or sister is no longer under bondage. That means they left, they broke the vows. Hallelujah. You got some Christian, well, the Bible says that's because you don't know your word. Hallelujah. Why would you become a sapphire and Ananias bringing you to hell? Is that what you got saved for? Come on. Hallelujah. I don't want to cause any, any debate, any struggle. God says, base your choice on my choice. He said, look at Jesus. He never bit his tongue. Hallelujah. Do you want peace in your house? Stop biting your tongue. And it's for me and my house? This is how we're going to live here. Well, what if my spouse don't want to Go to God and pray correctly and see if God won't handle up. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Look at verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sword and desiring to be fed with the crumb which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Mm, mm, mm. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. God says, I see all worlds. Hallelujah. I see the rich. And I see the poor. And guess what? I see the rich making bad choices. And I see the poor man making bad choices. Amen. It's not just the rich man making bad choices. I said it's the poor man making bad choices. God sees all. His world or his word covers all topics. Well, you don't know. My husband beat me. Okay. God got that covered too in scripture. <laughs> well, my child is rebel. God got that covered in scripture too. Oh. Hallelujah. Well, I'm running from God. God got that covered in scripture too. <laughs> God says, I got all topics covered from rich to poor right. to yeah. single or married. There's stuff in my word that can bless you, that can heal you, that can deliver you. Amen. This is the draw, the pull of Christianity, right? To walk in what? Freedom. To walk as the anointed of God. 
to walk in the identity of Christ, to walk in the truth of Christ, and to walk in the healing of Christ. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So he's telling us, look who the rich man is serving, and look who the poor man is serving. The rich man is serving his possessions. And the poor man is serving the rich man's possessions. Hmm. Hallelujah. What am I talking about? There are some children of God listening to me right now. And though you're going to make it into glory, God says, it's your choice to be a beggar. It's your choice to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Hallelujah. Why is that, God? Because he said, look at what the beggar man did. He kept begging the rich man for crumbs. He never asked God for the loaf. Hmm. Am I talking to anybody? I just want a high paying job. You don't want to be a business owner? You don't want to be a business owner? Man. All I want is $18 an hour. <laughs> Pastor, you think that's too much to ask for? Why don't you ask for $35 an hour? Come on. There was a time in America, Saints, when one income could take care of a whole household. Amen. Amen. Take care of all the children, light bill, mortgage, everything. Now, a two income can't even take care of it. Hmm. Ooh, we can't go back to work. We need a stimulus. We need a... You didn't have time to put up no money. Not the way this economy is. Yes or no? But you want to say the economy is doing well. If the economy is doing well, how come you wouldn't run on, for, on, on welfare that fast? Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting this, saints? Yeah. We are basing choices on us instead of what does God say? Didn't God say the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous? Come on. We should be making money now. I had this sister call me. She said, man of God, do you remember I called you in December of last year and told you my dream? I said, this people call me. She said, I had this big pocketbook, mm -hmm. and it wasn't mine, but the Lord said, yeah, go ahead and get it. It's y'all. And when she opened it up, she kept pulling money out, kept pulling money out. Mm -hmm. Long come this stimulus. Pull money out. Along come unemployment, pulling money out, pulling money out, pulling money out. Hallelujah. She said, this, I said, I told her, I said, God didn't show me where it's coming from, but you're about to get money on top of money that's going to take care of your car note, going to take care of everything. Hallelujah. Even, even able to save up. God speaks to us in vision and dreams, beloved. Amen. Pay attention to him. Please pay attention to him. And so he says that they had a rich man and a poor man. And he said, now, the beggar was Lazarus, which laid at his gate full of souls and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. You get that? That he didn't think he could have his own table? Am I talking to anybody who think you don't deserve a blessed marriage? Who Come think on. you don't deserve blessed children to be lawyers and doctors? You don't think you're supposed to be blessed not to have children that's going to have babies outside of wedlock? Come on. Great. So all you do is beg and I hope they dodge the bullet. Mm. Child, they ain't got to dodge the bullet because there ain't no bullet with their name on it. Am I right about it this morning? Amen. Or have you set bad examples for them? Hallelujah. Here's the rich man. Like, I got mine. He got his so much that he doesn't think he need God. And the beggar man is so broke, he thinks God can't hear him. Is there a balance of blessings? Absolutely. How, how many want to break the back of poverty today? Amen. Then repent. Amen. Repent and get rid of this beggar mentality. Get rid of this beggar mentality. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, 
in verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Remember I told you that represents what? Homegoing versus a funeral. Right. They both died. You know what I had to question? Lord, why did this man die broke? He said, because he never asked me for anything. He lived his whole life what? Begging. What about you? I just think it ain't working. Amen. Glory to God. Am I talking to any Christians that are living their whole life still begging? Devil, just leave me alone. <laughs> just give me a little bit, I'll be happy. How many want to be blessed going out and blessed coming in? Amen, How amen. many really want to be the head and not the tail? Come on. You got to know the intent of every scripture. You got to know the substance of what God really meant when he said it. You can't just quote it. Hallelujah. Lived and died begging all of his life. I got to ask you, where was his God? Would you follow a God where... The only example people see is, look, he broke, busting, and disgusting. Right. Isn't that why some people don't want to follow your God? Why should I follow your God? You don't even have a house. Okay. Why should I follow your God and you getting foreclosed on? You getting it every other time we look. Why should I serve your God? Hallelujah. Amen. How many people say, I'd rather serve the rich man's God? Amen. At least I'll be blessed on this side. How many know that's called this side? Because there is another level after this life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said there is a life after this life. Okay. Where was his God? And what was the poor man's choice? He never asked God to intervene for him. One had a home going service. And one had a funeral service. The other thing I want you to see is that hell is real. Hmm. Amen. I said hell is real. Amen. Hell is real. So much so that the Bible says, In hell he lifted out of his eyes being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Hallelujah. Amen. He's able to see. And what else? He's able to be tormented. I'm asking somebody to make a choice based on God's choice. And you don't have to worry about ever being tormented. You don't have to ever worry about missing out if you base your choice on God's choice this moment. Hallelujah. Hell is a place of what, saints? Continuous torture. Continual torment. Hallelujah. My God. And he cried and said in verse 24, Father Abraham. <laughs> Still calling him Father Abraham. I mean, he knew how to say the right thing. Come on. But didn't know how to apply know, the meaning of Father. What is the meaning of Father, Ham, Father Abraham to you when we say he is the father of our faith? Yeah. Are you Abraham's seed? Then why are you not walking blessed? Hallelujah. Are you just quoting it? I'm trying to help somebody today yes. to get you to see, my God, I need to change my choices. Yes. If it's your decision, don't blame God. Come on. It was that beggar's decision to stay what? Begging. Begging. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We saw blind beggar, uh, blind Bartimaeus. He was begging one time. Kind of Jesus said, uh-uh, Jesus, I'm tired of begging. Heal me. He said, what you want me to heal? My eyes tight, so I don't need to beg anymore. Am I talking to anybody that says today, the last day, I'm going to be begging? Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. What does that entail? He says, uh, uh, Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in the flame. Now, you got to see this. He don't even ask Lazarus what he want to do. 
So he still in hell got his mindset of how he see Lazarus. Hallelujah. Amen. Lazarus is in the bosom of peace. No more pain, no more suffering. And you're going to say, tell Lazarus to come. <laughs> and that's not how it's going to work in glory, land saints. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't get to heaven to be a second-class citizen. Come on. Am I right about it? Yes. Somebody say, make it plain. Make it plain. When I get to heaven, Abraham's going to be my brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I only have one Lord and one Savior. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Amen. I made it into glory. Hallelujah. So Abraham says, first of all, son, look at it. And Abraham said in verse 25, and Abraham said, son. Hey. <laughs> don't hurt me to call you brother. Don't hurt me to call come you on, sister. Come on, come on, come on. You're still going to end up where your choice took you. Come on. Amen. Yeah. See, you got people confusing you because they saying, hey, brother, hey, man of God, hey, sister, hey, woman of God. Ooh, you look like a preacher. You sound like a preacher. All of that's good until you wake up where? In hell. Yeah. I mean, to listen to the conversation. Amen. Father. Yes, son. What kind of father want me to stay here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Child, you going to play the game? I'm going to play it with you. Yes, son. Uh -huh. okay. You wasn't acting like a son when you were on the other side, were you? Hmm. <clears throat> now you're in, to the, in your reality. That's in verse 25. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, <clears throat> and you are tormented. Hmm. I mean, you know there's life after death. Amen. Isn't it a shame that you're going to be half a Christian here? <laughs> hey. And a whole Christian in hell? A whole no, backslider in hell. You are half a backslider here. <clears throat> but in hell, you know who's going to be tormenting you, right? He said, I'm tormented by what? What I see. I should have been up there, but I'm here. Look how many times I went to church. Look how many. You ain't never really went to church. You played church. Come on. You called me Father Abraham, but you never gave me my honor. You never gave me my respect. You never walked as a child of faith. You never walked as a seed of faith. Oh, you called me this and that, but you never did really respond to it. Am I talking to anybody that you got the church language down, but you ain't responded to repentance yet? You have not responded to, I need to change how I'm living. Hmm. I'm a false how I'm living into my Christianity. Hallelujah. Would you stand to your feet with me? I gotta hasten to close my time. It's getting short. He says, and besides all of this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. You had choices. Lazarus had choices. You got choices. I have choices. But still had a heart for what? For me. In spite of his condition. And he said, you didn't. The rich man never had a heart for Father Abraham. Mm -hmm. The beggar man, at least he did have a heart oh, toward. God. He didn't. The thing that got me was the word fixed. In other words, Abraham said, I can't do nothing for you. Ouch. What does that mean? You better hear me today. Jesus can't do nothing for you. The word of God is already fixed. Many shall come to me in that day and say, Heaven, I've done this, and Heaven, I've done that. And he said, Depart from me. You workers of inequity, I knew you not. It's already fixed. And he said, There is a great gulf where we can't come to you and you can't come to us. I don't care how much you pray, I don't care how much you do this. It is your choices that you made. That wasn't God's choice. Once God fixed or established a thing, he cannot change a thing. Are you hearing me this morning? Once he established a thing, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. It's fixed. You can't change it. 
Children obey your parents. It's fixed. You can't change it. Amen. If there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders. It's fixed. You can't change it. Amen. You got men, you got women saying, I'm going to work this out my own way. I'm going to do it my way. And you steady making bad choices. You steady affecting your family, your children, your job. When are you going to call on the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. Yes. You better call him on this side because the other side is too late. Amen. He says in closing, it's your choice. Don't blame God. Notice Father Abraham, the father of faith. He's talking to Father Abraham. Who is he not talking to? God. Hmm. Hallelujah. Don't you see that? Amen. You got people think because they're talking to the pastor, they're going to make it in heaven. You think because you go with the pastor, you're going to make it in heaven. You better make sure I'm telling you this today. Abraham didn't die for you. Amen. Mary did not die for you. Amen. You better talk to God. Hallelujah. You better call on Jesus. Come on. Before it's too late. That's what this message is for today. It's not too late. You're not too lost. There's nothing too dirty that he can't make worthy. Amen. Today. Make God's choice, your choice. Hallelujah. But you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve both. There is another life after this life, but you're trying to serve both of them on this side. Hmm. It's not going to happen, beloved. Yes, news can make you make the wrong choice. News can make you make the wrong choice. Look, look what I see on the news. Look at what they did here. Make the wrong choice. I get that. The news should not be informing you. God's word should Come inform on. you. Amen. The news should confirm whatever God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay. Whatever God is trying to show you this morning. Hallelujah. Wrong choices. The virus may even make you make wrong choices. Hallelujah. Amen. This virus. Amen. I thought the Bible said no home should come nigh my dwelling place. Amen. This virus may make you make wrong choices. I've come to tell you today, brothers and sisters, while there's still time, yeah. let's make the right choice today. Hallelujah. Lord, I've been trying to make this on my choice. It stops today. I've been thinking if I just go to church, you know, if my wife just go to church, you know, if my kids just go to church. No, you got to get this for yourself, baby boo. Amen. Bubba and Bubba Rat, you got to get this for yourself. Yeah. Today, God sent me to tell you, make your choice his choice. Every head bowed, no one looking around. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Heal, my mind. heal my mind. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I can't blame you can't for, my for my bad choices. But today, I denounce my choice. I want my choice to line up with your choice. Not my will, thy will. Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Take away fear, take away doubt, take away every spirit that does not belong, that I may surrender and submit to the move of the Holy Spirit, that I may walk in freedom, walk as the anointed, identify as Christ, walk in truth of Christ, and walk in the healing of Christ. I receive it by faith in Jesus Christ's name. Let everyone in agreement say amen. 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 Come on to the Lord of praise. My God, if that word bless you. We want to thank you for tuning in. We know that the message blessed you as well as stirred up your soul. MOGFC, where we are growing families, not just a church. If you need a healing or prophetic word, or if you know someone that needs prayer, we want to invite you to join us in our time of worship. Our service times are Sabbath school every Saturday morning starting at 9.15 a.m. Sabbath worship is every Saturday morning starting at 10.30 a.m. Our weekly Bible study is every Monday evening starting at 7 p.m. 
Our weekly prayer service is every Friday evening starting at 7.30 p.m. Our location, 4741 Highway 6 North, Houston, Texas, 77084. Our mailing address, P.O. Box 218-242, Houston, Texas, 77218. Or watch us live at www.new.livestream.com slash M-O-G-F-C or www.youtube.com slash M-O-G-F-C. Our web address, www.mogfc.org. Our email address, pastor at mogfc.org. We, we would love to see you soon. On behalf of Apostle D and the MOGFC family, be blessed, stay blessed, and be a blessing.